So hello everyone. This is Kristen Sullivan, Executive Director at the Ward Museum, and I'm here today to talk with one of our three 2022 to 2023 living legends, Jeff Reckon. And Jeff, as many of you know, is a two-time Best in World winner at the Ward World Championship. He's received many top finishes in other carving competitions throughout the country. He's an incredibly generous teacher and a volunteer, and I'm really excited to celebrate him today. So Jeff, congratulations, and thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. Uh, thank you very much, Kristen. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I'm hoping you could start by telling us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, how you got into wildfowl art. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, it's in the family. Um, my parents uh, went to art school together uh, up in Buffalo, New York. Um, graduated from that. My dad uh, was vice president of a... Uh, a fairly large art firm that had contracts uh, with uh, with NASA and Department of Interior and um, and, and others, and so uh, the art part really came down from that. Um, uh, my medium was different than my father's, but uh, uh, mine drifted up into uh, into nature and. Uh, and of course, uh, his was uh, more into uh, ended up being uh, a syndicated cartoonist. So hmm. uh, that's that's uh, that's where the interest uh, developed. That's neat. So how how did you get into decoys and wildfowl art? Was it because of your love of nature, or basic basically yeah. true? Yes, I, I grew up in Northern Virginia, and uh, we had. Uh, as a kid, we had a park down not far from me uh, with a lake and uh, spent a lot of time down there. As I'm talking as, as a young kid, I, I'd ride my bike down there. And uh, it, it gave me the opportunity to, uh, to see some uh, waterfowl, see some birds and other wildlife. Uh, I pretty much, um, I'm pretty much into all of it, but it started to really, really develop around birds as being the top uh, the top thing for me. That's interesting. Okay. And, and so how did you learn to carve then? And, and maybe who are some of your early teachers or influences? Well, this is really, this is really uh, funny because I, uh, when I started, I, I had, uh, I used to model make, I'd make, uh, my dad would bring home like uh, high quality cardboard because they'd build exhibits uh, where he worked and everything, bring bring home scraps of cardboard. And I'd build uh, a lot of different things, little models and, and, and things like that. And eventually got into wood and I was always using X-Acto knives uh, to, to cut board and stuff like that. I started carving. Mm -hmm. And so my first tool was an X-Acto knife and I uh, started carving wood and it, and it basically went, uh, went toward uh, birds so one of the first things i did uh was an owl i think and uh and uh it kind of went from there i i will say one thing um you had bob hines mm -hmm. as a featured uh, uh you featured his work at ward i i knew bob i um <clears throat> i would go to him as a kid uh because my dad had connections with the interior department and uh he was their uh staff artist and I'd go there, and he was a huge help to me, um, uh, just as a kid, um, uh, just because he was all about wildlife. And uh, I, I would I'd go to his uh, studio there, and 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 that was a huge thing for me. So that's so interesting. Propelled me. That's so neat. Yeah, propelled me along a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, I'm assuming you don't just use an X-Acto knife now. What are what are some of your tools or, or media of choice? <laughs> well, I, I certainly don't. I, but but it's funny, too, because people, uh, when I have taught seminars or, or uh, classes or whatnot, they're, they're, they're kind of stunned by an X-Acto knife. But I, I used it since from such a young age that it, it's just kind of part of my hand. And so I still use it for, for detailing and whatnot. But the other tools are basically gouges and chisels. Um, um, uh, it's old world style uh, carving, you know, uh, like, 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 you know, uh, developed in, you know, Europe with the cuckoo clocks and really intricate uh, work like that. They would use, uh, you know, the gouges and chisels. And so 
I use file, which are Swiss made tools. And uh, so I have a, a, an array of tools now. Uh, but, uh, but the exact, it still hangs in there. That's so neat. Okay. And you know, why birds out of, out of all the different amazing things in nature? Um, how did that become your focus? Birds are amazing to me. Uh, they, they're just, they're just amazing. Their instinctual ability to, to it just migration alone baffles the mind, you know, that they, uh, example, uh, you can have a, a hummingbird that travels, you know, <clears throat> travels uh, in the fall, late summer, they start to migrate and they travel to Central and South America. And then, then when spring arrives here again, they travel back up and they can end up in the almost the exact spot, like on the property here where I live, mm -hmm. in the exact spot, even going all the way to South America and then ending up back in the same spot exactly to pinpoint that. So birds in general, just, uh, they amaze me. The flight, the, you know, the, just, just, just their instinctual abilities uh, to to navigate, uh, uh, and also there's such a vet. It's it's not like a, a deer or something like that. There's so many different kinds and so many different patterns to work with. It just almost lit, lends itself to to uh, painting and art. There's so much there from one to the other. So uh, I did gravitate toward them, but it started out as an interest in you know owls and and, and uh and birds of prey and and what but now it's all of it it's all songbirds hmm. interesting um and you know over the years what's something that you've learned that you wish you knew when you were younger or or something that maybe you would tell a novice artist or carver hmm. let's see um uh well one thing, one thing that I, I did learn that it, that's, that's very helpful, and uh, I'll do it uh, still occasionally. Sometimes I just uh, do the birds themselves. I've done enough of them, but model making is big. If you can, mm -hmm. if I had to pass something on to a novice, it would be it would be model making because you can make your mistakes in clay. You can't make them in wood. It's unforgiving. Um, you 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 know with clay. If there's a mistake, you can pull a piece off. You can put a piece back on, and 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 you do you do solve a lot of uh, a lot of issues that you would run into, and then possibly ruin ruin a piece of uh, 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 a bird in wood because uh, because it's unforgiving then. But clay is a is a medium that I I suggest uh, to work with. You get it the way you want, and then generate a pattern from that, and then. Uh, um, generate a pattern uh, on wood drawn out of wood and then you can uh, you know cut it out on the bandsaw and go from there. That makes a lot of sense. Um, now I'm wondering you know can you tell us about a, a colossal failure you've had or, or just something that didn't go right at all and then what did you learn from it or how did you recover? Well I can tell you I can <laughs> I can tell you one, and this was early on. I think I entered board for the first time uh, back in the early '80s. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing this. I had no idea, uh, you know, that it was anything big or how many people were actually doing it at all. And so I entered the competition. And what I was doing back then is I did a lot of smoothies. It didn't have the detail. And it had wooden legs. I mean, I carved the legs out of harder wood. I used like fruit wood for that. Mm -hmm. And I put the bird in, and uh, then I came back later looking at all the rest of the work on the table. And my bird was there with the bird on the table and just a base with some legs on it. It had broken. And so oh, no. uh, that was, so that was, that really bothered me a lot. And what I needed to do is, is to go ahead and find out some of the technical things that, uh, that these other carvers were doing, including metal legs and, and whatnot. I, uh, like I said, I, I, I was, I was that far uh, down the, the line as far as nobody else being able to, uh, you know, uh, talk to about uh, a best way to do things. And so that was one thing I remember distinctly. And uh, so I, so I, you know, uh, 
I had uh, connected through various means with other artists and uh, who helped me just to see how they were doing um, particular things. I I had already had the, the carving of, of birds on the way, but the technical things uh, like metals and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. Um, do you still have that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't at the time. No, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Did you keep that piece? <laughs> uh, I have no idea where that piece ended up. You know, you do you do so many over the, the amount of time that I've done this that that there's pieces that I'll see some pieces. Um, I, I I I delivered a commission piece recently, and they had a, a piece there that. Uh, that I had done for them and I completely forgot about or, or even why or when I did it. Uh, mm. So, um, so yeah, so that piece there, I, I have no idea what became of that. Some of those very, very old first pieces I have at, that are, uh, you know, smoothies, uh, no detail on them at all from way back when I do have, uh, they, I kept them in a, it's just in a little box somewhere, but, um, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's just a learning curve all the way. And uh, once competition, once I saw competition, what was going on there, uh, then the detail part uh, came about um, <clears throat> because it was, it was uh, you know, uh, basically uh, that was, uh, that was um, needed for, for competition. I mean, that you needed to do that kind of detail. I actually prefer still going, going back. I still am kind of dripping back to where I was uh, when I was younger, as far as the smoothies, because I, I've learned to paint well enough, so I can do it. Um, um, what do you, what do you think is the most difficult part of your process and how do you deal with that? Uh, the div most difficult part, I would say, is there. There is a uh, there's a time frame there when you're when you uh, from when you cut it uh, out a blank on a bandsaw, basically, which is just a flat on both edges. Just basically, the profile of the piece you're doing. Uh, the 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 most uh, difficult part for me is there's a uh, there's a time frame there where you where I always explain is that is now you're over the hump and basically when you're going into a bird and you're carving a bird, you reach a certain point, uh, in, in, in anatomically where everything's in place. And, uh, and then I know, okay, this bird's in. And it's so there, there's a, there's a, there's one spot in the process for me where it's going from a, just a, a, a block, to, to that bird where the head, the tail, uh, where they join into the body, everything is in place. And then I know, then I, then I know I'm over that hump and in the, in the piece will, will be successful. Hmm. Interesting. Um, all right. Do you have a, a favorite piece that you've made? A favorite piece I've done? Yep. Is that, um, there's a there's a couple pieces that I was I I I, uh, I guess would come to mind um, uh, the miniature uh, uh, fighting uh, gobblers uh, that won world for me the second time in in the miniature division is is one that comes to mind because it was it was one where I uh, there was a, a little bit more of a technical challenge there to to get these birds to look like they were fighting and then uh and then to uh figure out uh the the best attachment uh, so that they're separate but they're but they're still totally engaged mm -hmm. so um i would say i would say that piece would come to mind is I, I love that piece as well so um i can see why um okay and and what piece really required you to grow as an artist, maybe into a realm that you hadn't considered before, or maybe it was a stretch for you? Uh, let's see. Um, I did a piece uh, probably 10 years ago. Um, and it was, a, 
it was uh, it was a stretch for me because just for technically it was one of the most elaborate ones that I've done, and it was a um, it was a trio of a uh, uh, so three birds um, cedar wax wings on grapevine, and and the grapevine was an literally an armature that I had to had to build for that because um, I'm not the best with a with a torch or 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 this and that as far as metals are concerned so that was uh that was a technical challenge that uh that i had to uh, uh really really think about um it it turned out uh turned out good i thought but but uh technically that was a that was a stretch for me because uh, i've never uh really done anything quite to that level uh uh, technically. Okay, that makes sense. That's neat. Um, now you mentioned that if that, if that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. You mentioned that you've been coming to Worlds since uh, the early 80s. And I'm wondering, um, you know, have what, what's maybe what's one of your favorite parts of competition, whether it's Worlds or another carving co competition? Um, I would have to say just to see uh, what the progress is with the art form itself. Hmm. Um, if you're going to see how this, how, if anyone's going to really see how this uh, art is, is evolving, that's the place to do it. People are constantly pushing the boundary and that's what art is about. Uh, uh, so, so when I go to competition, it has to, has to do with that. Of course it has to do with seeing people and, you know, and uh, in, in talking about what we do, we're, we're all uh, one big uh, family of people that are doing the same thing. So that when you are discussing this something, uh, any of this work, uh, you're not talking a foreign language like you would be to somebody who has no idea uh, about this, this art form or art in general. So, um so I, I believe that the competitions for those two reasons, uh, really, uh, really, uh, what I like, uh, uh, the, the ocean city for the world championships is, uh, is fantastic. Uh, just, just in the location, the time of year, um, uh, um, the, the proximity to, to the ocean, I don't get to see that all the time. And so, uh, that, that would also, for that particular competition that that's uh that is, i think that's really uh really fun it's it you're at it you're there at a time of year when there's not a you know a, a million people wandering around as far as uh, the, the season itself the beach season it's just it's just you know, always look forward to that fantastic um how have competitions changed you as an artist well it it definitely it changes you um not even if you're looking for change it it will change you as far as um um you know, pushing you uh that's i guess that would be the one plus for competition um um the one plus for the competition is it's going to it's it's going to push you. It's going to make you better because it's a competition. So uh, other people are going to push uh, the envelopes there and, uh, and you will do the same. So if I was to say, uh, what, what is, uh, what would be the good part or the, or the positive part of competition, it would be that it, it, it will, it will push you to be better than, than, uh, than you were before. That makes sense. Fantastic. Um, so, and then finally, you know, as one of the three living legends for 2022 to 2023, is there anything that you'd like to say to your mentors, peers, friends, or others who may be listening? Uh, yeah, I'd just say that, uh, you know, uh, met a lot, a uh, lot of good people, a lot of, uh, friends, uh, um, through it all. And, uh, um, and it's just uh, it's been a help helpful for me. Uh, uh, just the uh, just the camaraderie in the, in the, uh, the passing forth of ideas uh, back and forth. Because, like I said, in, unless uh, unless you uh, 
unless you are an artist or, or no art, it's hard to uh, hard to draw that from somebody because uh, we're not all meant to be artists. But the, the ones that are and the ones that are uh, have achieved a, a certain level, um, it's it's uh, super uh, super positive. And like I said, you're talking to somebody. It's almost like like I said before. It's almost like you know, a foreign, uh, speaking a foreign language or whatever, they, you know, you understand this language, if I could put it that way. And uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that, you know, I also thank the, uh, uh, the War Foundation and, uh, and its staff uh, for uh, allowing me to, or to be uh, uh, picked as a living legend. So it's an honor. Well, thank you. I know, you know, we were talking yesterday uh, that that we first met you and I when I was a very new curator at the Ward Museum, and you were kind enough right. to drive several hours to bring a life size turkey to me for for one of my first exhibits. Right, I've always, right. I've always thought the world of you, and I know that you are are giving like that in in a lot of different ways. Helped a lot of young artists, and and you know, and uh, and have been a, a good friend and. and Gosh, longtime volunteer and everything, helping out the Ward Foundation and and fellow carvers. So we certainly appreciate you. And um, I just want to thank you for for joining me today um, to to talk with me, be part of our hybrid Ward World Championship. Hopefully, the last hybrid Ward World Championship, and we'll get to get to right, celebrate right, right. next year in Ocean City. And and just again, congratulations on on being one of the 2022 to 2023 Living Legends. And um, and and thank you for everything you do. Kristen, thank you so much. I appreciate it.